All right, so at this point, the uh, functionality seems to be functioning. And so uh, I can show a class, I can click a pencil, it then fills in the field. Okay, well, that class 2 to 2 should have actually been, you know, uh, English 101, this instructor Smith, and I can edit it. So then it fills it in. This then comes back into the issue that I said previously. Technically, we have something here, if you notice. Okay, class 777. Class 777, uh, that should have been 77x. And this is going to be uh, Japanese 101 instructor uh, Fuji. So we get into that same problem as before. Edit class, warning, CRN 77x does not exist. So just because we put that field in there doesn't mean <clears throat> we're editing what we think we are. Now that we're changing it, now we have a completely different ID. So there's several ways to handle this. One way is another data checking. If, I'm, if the person is trying to change that, uh, that data, we need to run extra if-else checks. If the uh, ID in question is different from the one currently being edited, what we would need to do is to create a brand new item in the database. We cannot change the IDs, really. So we'd have to, behind the scenes, create a brand new. We'd have to do db.put to create a brand new record in the database and then delete the old record and the new record is the one that takes over. So that's one way to do it. Here's a much easier way. Let's go back to our code. Let's go up to our line where we've got uh, the input field at about line 139 or so where we've got the edit CRN. And an easier way to get this to to behave so that you know if the person is not typing in the right thing we have we add here one more attribute disabled this is kind of an odd one it doesn't need technically it's disabled equals disabled or maybe disabled equals true but disabled here notice it's just an attribute kind of floating all by itself this solution, what it does is I've got show classes, edit a class, and now that is not editable. You can't change it. You can't break it. That's not the best solution. Perhaps we do want them to fix it with the right with the right value here. That's fine for the moment. So this is the it's programming by least effort, but it still, it still works. Now there's a way that people can edit that. That's the name of the ID. So if they, obviously, yes, if they did completely mess this up, that should have been 227. <coughs> yes, they will have to <coughs> delete 222 and input it again properly. And if we have time, because we've still got other things to worry about, if we have time, we can do, we can implement what I was saying that we'd have to check doesn't exist, we need to create a new one, then delete the old one, and the new one takes over, all behind the scenes. So, we might do it later. But for the moment, this is enough. We can no longer change it and break it. I was doing disabled. It's locked, yeah. It still works, it still holds the data for our purposes, but we can no longer edit the data. So we've got a way to, we've created a database very early on, we added data, showed data, deleted data, edited data. Maybe we want to start all over completely, delete the whole thing. It's a new semester or something, I want to start over, start with a brand new set of classes and such. So let's look at how to delete the, the whole thing. Obviously, that's a big thing. We're going to delete all our data, so we should definitely have some some uh, confirmations. We're going to ask the user, are you sure you want to delete everything? And if true, then yeah, delete everything. Maybe a couple of are you sure? Because it's going to be really, really permanent to delete all the data. Later on, much later on, if we have time, we could set this up to actually export the data, to send it as an email to someone. 
when we get it back into our Cordova project. We're going to talk about a plugin that will let us send an email or send data outside of our app. This is different than the database replication. We will be able to send uh, something out of our app. That will be later. For the moment, let's talk about deleting. We need some sort of button, some sort of functionality to be able to, to delete everything. So we'll back up to the portion where we created these fields. Oh, we're in the right area, actually. So where, where you added disabled, we're then going to add a new line after that to add more to our string. We've got the part where we created the table, the part where we created the edit field, where we've created the edit or update fields. We're going to create a delete the whole database area. And for the moment, it'll look very basic and not that nice. And then later on in jQuery Mobile, we can make it look nice. Three horizontal rulers just to separate it, separate everything out in our real code here. Just a simple button to delete everything. Uh, so we'll have um, input type button, single quotes, uh, value of the text, delete classes. And then an ID, so we can use jQuery. It's a good name to delineate in our code that we're going to delete it all, that we're going to get rid of it all. ETN nuke. We're going to get rid of the whole thing. We then need to create an event handler for that. Um, on click, ETN nuke. We're going to run a function to delete the whole database. So that creates a brand new element on screen dynamically. We need to back up to our area where we're defining all of these event handlers. So after the last one, that's fine. We'll have um, the same thing as before. We need to target the element that does exist before we can target the element that doesn't. And this one, this one will be uh, simpler than the last one. We're not going to need to pass data into it, so we don't need to do the anonymous function. So back at about line 50 or so, we've got, again, the click event, further specifying the element of pound btn nuke, comma, the function fn nuke. We don't need any fancy arguments, so we can just do that. And we'll go back to the bottom to start to specify, to define that function. So down at the bottom, we'll create a new function. Function fn nuke 
parentheses curly braces. This is and function nuke. We have simply db dot destroy, and it'll delete the database. So that will delete the database, but that obviously deletes the database. So we want to do some sort of conditional statement. We can do if else um, or other methods. Let's do a switch. So we'll start a switch conditional statement. Do here confirmation before deleting the database. Switch. And the syntax is then we've got a case something colon which breaks. So that's a unit. Yes. Swith. Yes. There we go. Switch. Thank you. Then we've got another case. Something happens in this block. Break. We can have as many cases as we want, and we often end with a default case. That's the general syntax of a switch. This is very useful for uh, testing multiple known quantities. If else, the basic of if else is two possibilities. We can have if else and then else if, sure. But um, here is a way to test multiple possibilities that I know about. If I don't know a, a certain possibility, then we have default, where we can then define, figure out how to define other possibilities. And the syntax got break. So after we check our first case, and if that's the case in question, we break. We then don't do the following. One possible reason to do it this way is because we can put the most likely result first, then it's done. It no longer process processes the rest of the code. If we put it in the order that the most likely possibility is, you know, the fifth case, it's going to check all of those cases using processing power until it gets to the fifth case and then it ends. So try to put your most likely case, your most likely scenario, as the first case, and then it stops processing. Do here hashtag pro tip. Add the most likely case first. It will process, break, and continue, freeing up resources. Our switch, then, is some sort of condition. We have the built-in plain old JavaScript method of confirm. We have alert, which gives us a pop-up that just gives us info. We have prompt, which asks us something, to type something. And then we have confirm, which is a you know agree or cancel sort of thing. 
in uh, Cordova, we can style it and make it look a little nicer, but we have a very basic version here. So we'll do confirm. That has its own opening and closing parentheses. Confirm asks for user to agree or not. So confirm. And then we put a, a message here. What are we what are we asking or, or telling them? So we can say something like, uh, you're about to delete everything. Confirm. Delete all your data. Oops, this should be in quotes. This is a string, so in quotes, you're about to delete all your data. Backslash n for a new line. Confirm. pop-up with the options of you know agree or disagree. We, we can't really edit the values of those buttons at, at this point just yet. We could with Cordova. We might revisit that later. So the possibilities here then are that the person confirms or, or doesn't. We have a case of true. They agreed to delete everything. There's the case of cancel, or false that is. They canceled it or, or clicked the the no button. There probably isn't a third possibility, but if there is, we have the, the default there. Starting with default, give us some user output. Third choice was made. We need to then further set up some code to troubleshoot that to kind of figure out what might have been a third possibility. In the case of false, uh, no feedback to the user is necessary here. They're about to delete the database. They're like, never mind, and they cancel. So to the user, nothing, nothing happens. But to us, then we can just give ourselves a note that user canceled. We could have something that appears on screen that says, you know, thank you for not deleting something. But in our case, we'll just make it super simple that nothing happens if they cancel. For the moment, we'll do a console output here, and then we'll make it do the real thing in a moment. Which will say, user is trying to delete. I'm trying to nuke. Save it and run it just to kind of make sure this is working, and then we'll make it work for real. Question? So in confirm is the other? Confirm, uh, yes. Well, not HTML, JavaScript. JavaScript. Confirm is a plain old built in JavaScript command. And what the opposite of confirm? We'll see right now. Once we run it, we will see the possibilities. Let's give this a try. Save that, run it. Show your classes. That's where your delete button is at, your nuke button. Um, click the button and you should get the confirm pop-up. Try click and then check your console and try playing with the possibilities and see what you get in your console. In my example, if I show classes, I have delete classes. Click that. There's the pop-up. This page says, you're about to delete all your data. Confirm. So confirm has the possibilities of OK and cancel. And what happens is if I click cancel, that then returned true, or that returned false. My confirmation was false. So I run into the user canceled, if it's spelled right, canceled. It runs into the canceled case, the false case. If I try to delete again, and this time say OK, it runs into the user is trying to nuke. User is has selected true. So confirm has built in true and false. I don't think we can make a default. Now we do have a little X here. In my case, I've got OK, true, cancel, false, and X. Clicking X in this case is the same as canceled. But if there were a third way, a third possible error, because again, I've said before, it's hard to make foolproof software because there's so many ingenious fools. So we weren't able to, I wasn't able at the moment to create the default 
condition, but if there was a third condition, we would we would hear about it in the console. So we have basically you're about to delete everything, true or false. A person might not be paying too much attention and click the first thing that they see. Okay. Then they realize, wait a minute, what did I just click? So let's have another confirmation, one more confirmation inside of true. So we'll get one confirmation first. Are you sure? We'll do an are you sure inside of true. We can do another switch or an if else. Either will give us the exact same result. Basically, we have again a true or false. Just for fun, this time let's do an if else. In this case, we have two possibilities. With another confirm. Are you sure? In this case, the true part uh, is if, and the else is, is, is canceled, just to see it again here. They really want to delete console. They change their mind. Just test that and see if these levels of confirmation are working. And then if this is all working, then we will do the actual db.destroy, and it will go away. There's no undo. This whole if? Um, oh, semicolon, yes, good eye. So, let me check on mine. Now, I would have gotten an error, and that would have been good for troubleshooting, but thank you for pointing it out. Let's see here. So, I've got some classes. I'm going to delete the class. I'm going to click OK. Pops up, are you sure? Uh, behind the scenes, I can't see it behind my pop-up, but I'm getting some feedback. I'm going to cancel it this time. Maybe I wasn't sure, so I'll cancel that. They changed their mind. So I did get the first part. You're trying to nuke. I'm going to do it again. I'm sure. I'm really sure. Click OK. They really want to delete. So we've got two levels there. A confirm and then an are you sure. So that's the first switch. We could have done another switch, case true, case false, default, it's a little less typing with a simple if else. We could have done the first level of it as an if else, uh, because we have the true and the false. But depending on what you're trying to accomplish, a, 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 a switch might work or an if else might work. We can chain more if else conditions. We have if else, and I think we've done it a little bit to do if else and then else if to ask for more possibilities. So we have multiple ways to ask. So if we got to this far, then um, we really want to delete. So under true, our command is upon the db, upon the pouch db object, we have dot destroy.
creatively named. It has a lot of finality to it. So here what we get is um, here um, most of the pouch commands have an option and then our callback function. This one doesn't. We are destroying this object, so we don't have to further specify which database. It's this database. But we do have a function callback of failure or success. this failure success and then we should then deal with the if else failure success so we'll break that curly brace note here and dot destroy because inside of that we've got an if else I can't quite hear you. What's that? I'm really sorry. I can't can't hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it's down here. Because we broke the curly brace. Oh yeah. So then here on if else, this is our and if else for dot destroy. If failure. We want to see in the console what that is. To the user, an alert. Error. Contact the developer. So if there was some sort of error deleting the database, there's our if. And the else part, well, that's that it did destroy the database. It's, it's gone. So if you would like, you can give yourself some console output to see that success object. It, has, it could have various properties that might be useful to us as a developer. And then what we want to do is we've got the L div if we call it what's the name of our div where we're showing everything L div results L div results we need to we need to we need to hide it uh, we we no longer have results we no longer have data on screen our L div results is the table of our classes and it has the buttons to edit our classes and delete and all of that. Well that we no longer need to display it because once we get to else the data is gone behind the scenes. Uh, in front of the scenes we have to then for the user hide the table. There's no more table to show. The data is gone. 
so we have a way to fade the table out. But as we had before, when we want to fade the table in, we have to kind of think backwards. So first we have to make sure that we've shown the table, and then we can do a dot fade out. Really slow, uh, four seconds. You can see their data melting away to the depths. So we're saying to that, to that, uh, to that div, we have to first show it, so that then we can fade it out in four seconds. What we also need to do is reinitialize the database, the whole PouchDB system. We've deleted the database. There's no more database for us to start to put data. We have a function, remember? initDB. I believe is what we called it. And that starts the database all over again. Yes? Show me is that default show function? Or? Show is, is jQuery mobile. Okay. There's other ways to do it with plain old JavaScript. It's going to be longer to type. jQuery gives us a nice quick shortcut. Show and hide. <clears throat> Database is gone. Fade out the table. Fade out the empty table. Reinitialize. Reinitialize. Reinitialize the pouch. DB database a new. If we try to then start to add data from this point forward without in a DB, there's no database. You're going to get errors. So we've got a way to start the database over. It's going to have the exact same name as before. Doesn't matter, but it's a brand new database with brand new data. So here comes a moment of truth. Save it and run it. Go ahead through the delete process, and you will lose all your valuable data. But it's testing data at this point, hopefully. Delete it and check your you check the Chrome database viewer. It should be totally gone, and then we can start to add data again. I'm going to try it here. I'm going to look first at my at my Chrome. <coughs> Index DB data by sequence. I put all of this data here. It served me well, but now I need to get rid of it. So show classes, delete classes, confirm, yep, really confirm, yep. I delete it. Slowly fading off into the sunset. Too slow, but it's gone there. And then if I refresh the viewer by sequence, there's nothing. Try to show class. Nothing. Again, we'll deal with this. Try to show trying to show a database that's nothing. We, we should do some further uh, setup on that in a little bit. But now I can start to add data again. So I've got class two two two, etc. Go two 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 class seven 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 seven. And as I start to refresh my data again, my database I have two new items in the database. Now also, when I was deleting the databases, if I was going through that process, users trying to nuke, they really want to delete. I did finally do a confirm, and I got OK true, and then my database is reinitialized empty. And then I'm starting to add data to the database. Do that again, so confirm all of that. Deleted, object OK true. It's gone. Show classes, no classes to show.
four seconds is too long. I'm just going to do two seconds. Let's pause there. Did everyone get uh, something like that working? Your database is deleted and we're starting over.